YouTube, how you do cousins? It's Rusty here. Thanks for joining me. In this video, I'm gonna go over a bunch of things that have to do with jewelry, costume jewelry and fine jewelry. If you're out looking at, say, garage sales or yard sales or estate sales or any kind of place, or even maybe you're looking through some stuff that you were given by a family member or just somehow came into your possession and you wanna know, is this valuable? Is this just cheap old costume jewelry? Is it junk? Is it valuable? This video is gonna give you a lot of tips to help you know whether or not what you have uh, has any value and roughly what the value would be. We're gonna talk about things that have precious metals like silver and gold. We're gonna talk about jewelry that have semi-precious or precious gemstones in them. And we're gonna talk about designer names and the, the different uh, areas to look at on a piece of jewelry to decide whether or not it's valuable. Um, there are some certain telltale signs and the teaser here is that you oftentimes need to look at the back of the piece of jewelry. And that's true if it's a pendant or uh, you know, earrings, brooches, things like that. Let's get into it. I'm gonna give you several different tips on things to look at to help you have a pretty good idea if this is junk or if it might be a treasure. Let's do this. I'm talking about a rusty how-to. Rusty how-to. When you come across a piece of jewelry, the first thing you need to figure out is what is your initial impression? Does it look attractive? Now, that's a very abstract idea, um, but if you've looked at enough jewelry, you'll start to see differences between something that is higher end, nicer looking, and something that is cheap. And so look, if it has stones in it, look at the stones. Do the stones look bright? Do they look dark? Um, what's the overall design of the piece? Is it interesting and unique? Or is it something very basic? Maybe you've seen the same type of design on multiple pieces of jewelry in the past. After you've looked at that and kind of figured out whether or not you think it's something that you would want to wear or you think someone else would want to wear, then the next step is to turn that sucker over and start to examine the back. Here's what you're going to look for. Folks, we're going to be looking at several pieces of costume jewelry here, and I'm going to give you an example of something that is not considered high-end versus high-end stuff and how to tell the difference. So to start off here, we need to examine a piece of costume jewelry and we're gonna do some comparisons here. And the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take a look at it and just see, is it appealing to the eye? Does it seem like it is uh, you know, beautiful? Does it kind of catch the eye? Is it shiny? Is it attractive or is it not? Okay, so uh, these pieces I'm showing you right here, very colorful, very brilliant. You got lots of light coming through here. Very, uh, very beautiful. And these right over here, these uh, necklaces, for example, are not the same type of beautiful, but they do look classy. Okay, they got that gold tone. They got the stones and the dark color. And so, uh, roughly speaking, these are fairly attractive. This one does not seem quite as attractive because it's kind of dull. We'll get to this in a moment, but you do have some splashes of color, which is a nice little contrast. So first off, when you're looking at jewelry, you are want to take a look and, and say to yourself, does this look attractive? Is it interesting? Rusty says I'm supposed to ask myself, is this attractive? Is this interesting? This is a very kind of abstract, kind of loose design. Um, a little bit different. This is a brooch, as you can see here. Um, it's got this little clasp that holds that in place. Um, and, you know, it could be put any particular direction. It doesn't necessarily matter. However, you would want to want to have that placed. And so, quite nice. After you kind of assess just generally the way that it looks, then you're going to want to turn that piece over and you're going to want to look for a variety of things. One thing you're going to want to look for is whether or not the stones in it, if it has stones in it, you're going to want to look to see uh, if there's an opening behind the stone. So here's an example of a piece that has stones in it, but as you can see, it's flat on the back. So you can't see through the stone to the other side. However, this is an example of a piece that has stones. And if you turn it over, you'll notice that they are set so that the stones can have light pass all the way through them. Do you see that? And that allows 
it to be quite bright and, and the color, you know, the color is quite nice. This one, you still have some color, but it doesn't. Whenever a stone in a piece of jewelry has an opening in the back, typically that indicates a higher value stone, something like that. Ones that do not have that are not as high value, usually. You can see this piece here has a stone here. It's set, but it does not have any light passing through. This one does. It's a little murky, uh, uh, you know, beneath there. It needs to be clean, but it does have a little window and an opening. Whereas this piece is unique because if you turn it over, you'll see that several of the pieces do not have light passing through. But you do have two sections here that are open. I'll get back to that piece in a moment. So you want to look and see. Does, you know, it doesn't have gems. It does. You turn it over. Oop, there's nothing there. Okay. So the stones that are here, though they look nice, are probably not going to be as valuable. They'll probably be just what they call rhinestones. And rhinestone is not defined as any particular item. It's, it's essentially a description of a stone used in jewelry, which is not a precious gemstone. If the stone is... Uh, such that there's an opening in the back. Turn it back around to the front and take a look. Is the stone prong set or is it uh, set with kind of like a bezel around it? What I mean by that is, are there little things that look like little tiny fingers coming up over the stone, holding it in place? If it is prong set, how sturdy is the prong setting? I mean, could you pry that sucker up with your fingernail, your thumbnail really easily? or does it seem to be fairly sturdy, fairly significant? If it's easily pulled out, or you could pull that prong up real easily, then the likelihood that that's holding something that's valuable or precious is pretty low, because you're not gonna put something like an emerald or a diamond or a ruby into a piece of jewelry, but not secure it well. So if you have a piece of jewelry that has a gemstone or some sort of stone in it that is prong set, that prong setting is sturdy it's holding it in place real well and on the back side there's an opening where light can come through then the, there's a high likelihood that that piece of jewelry is a higher end piece of costume jewelry or maybe something that's even nicer than that another thing you want to look for cousins is the stones themselves and decide and, and determine whether or not the stones are prong set or if they are glued into place in this particular case you can see that these stones are not prong set. Rather, they are glued into place, as you can see there. They're just sitting on the top. Whereas, this piece, you'll notice, has all of these little settings right here. All around it, like little fingers. And they're not easily taken off. I can't pry that up with my nail even if I try. These are better quality. These are actually authentic gemstones. Whereas the stones in this are likely made of glass. Um, people who make these pieces of jewelry are going to make sure that a valuable or precious stone is set in such a way as to hold it in place and not lose it. You don't want that thing to fall out. Whereas it's cheaper, easier to just glue pieces of stone down in here. But you would never want to do that with a precious stone because of the likelihood that it could fall out. And also that messes a little bit with uh, the light that would pass through as well. Another thing to look at when you're trying to evaluate a piece of jewelry is to look at the back of the piece at the metal portion. Is that metal portion slick and polished? looks kind of uniform and nice, or is it rough and textured? A lot of lower end, lower quality costume jewelry will have a texture in the metal, a lot of times in a very uniform pattern. It's almost like they've tried to dress it up, make it look fancier than it really is. People who make really nice high end jewelry, costume jewelry, don't bother with that kind of thing typically. Now there are some exceptions to that rule, and we'll get into that and I'll show you in a moment. The exceptions would be if it is also stamped 
with either the type of metal, the purity of the metal, or the manufacturer that made the piece. Because there are some manufacturers of high-end costume jewelry that will put a little bit of texture in the metal uh, to add a little bit of a flare. But if, the, if it is textured and not in the presence of any sort of stamp indicating who made it or what type of uh, metal it is, then it's probably of lower quality. Another thing you can examine on the back of a piece of jewelry to determine whether or not it's higher end or not is the metal itself. Let's look at the back. Is the metal slick and polished on your piece of jewelry or does it have some sort of design or some sort of texture like this piece? See how this is all gritty and textured? That is not by accident. This one, much more uh, detailed and uh, done on purpose. It's done to, uh, you know, manufacture the look of something that's higher end. However, this piece is not nearly as valuable as this piece. The work that they did on this has a lot to do with the look of it, the design of it, and how they have the stones in place. Whereas this is more the shape of a particular motif, and then they're trying to make it look valuable by putting this texture in the back. Now, there are examples of where this does not uh, pan out. For example, something like this or this would maybe be contrary to the rule because you can see that they actually have a maker's name on here. And so if you know who the manufacturer is and you can look them up, then you can tell whether or not their pieces are selling very well or not. But in the absence of those... If you find something that's textured like this, oftentimes that's a telltale sign that it's a lower quality. One very easy thing to look for and to remember to look for when you're evaluating your piece of jewelry is, is there any sort of marking on the jewelry itself? These markings can be just about anywhere, depending on who made it and what time period it was made in. The three types of things you'll be looking for are as follows. You're going to be looking to see, is it uh, marked with the manufacturer of the piece, who it was that made it. Some brands, and this is not an exhaustive list, guys, this is just a few examples, but some brands to look for that sell for decent money that are more common would be as follows. It would be Listener, Coro, Signer, Weiss, Trafari, Clements. Uh, Roman, uh, and then some of the, as you're going down to something that still can sell for some money, but not super high end would be like Monet, Sarah Coventry, Napier. Um, and then there are a variety of designer pieces, higher end costume jewelry, and there's a large list. And probably at least once a week, I come across a name I've never seen before and I have to look it up. But almost any time that I find a piece of, co of jewelry and it has a name of someone on the back, especially if it's one I'm not familiar with, provided it's reasonably priced, I get it. Uh, I, I'll do my research right at that at that moment if I can with my phone, but uh, off, I, I basically don't buy individual pieces of, of jewelry, costume jewelry anymore, unless it has either a marking of the metal or a marking saying who made it. Because I know that people are willing, at least on eBay and online platforms, they're paying decent dollar values for pieces that are signed and a lot less or not buying them at all if they're not signed. So that's important. Is it signed? Does it have a stamp of, of the metal? And does it have gemstones in it? Or are they just glued into place? Now, some higher end costume pieces with uh, the names of the manufacturers will not have precious gemstones and they'll have things glued in. But uh, as long as it has a name, there's a market for it typically. Uh, but if it's a piece that does not have a, a window in the back so you can see through the stone, if it's glued in, if it doesn't have a marking, say in the middle, and it doesn't have any sort of name on it, and if it's textured in the back or it just generally looks kind of cheap and non-attractive, I'm leaving it where it is. Bottom line. Another thing to keep a lookout for, guys, when you're looking at a piece of jewelry is to look and see if there is any sort of maker's mark or name on here. This particular piece, as you can see right here, I've got it upside down, but let's find it. There it is. Another thing you're going to be looking for is a stamp of the metal itself. 
Is there any stamp of an indication that it's made of a semi-precious or precious metal? Is it, does it say sterling on it, for example? Sterling would mean sterling silver. And sterling silver could also have a stamp that says 925, which gets to the second part. Is there any sort of stamp that says the type of metal? And is there a stamp that says the purity of the metal itself? Sterling silver will oftentimes say 925 on it. There are other stamps like 800, and that's an indication of the amount of parts per thousand of that metal. So a piece of jewelry that's stamped 925, and it does not have to be silver in appearance. It could be a copper color or even a gold color and still be made of silver, sterling silver. 925 indicates 925 out of a thousand parts silver, pure silver. So uh, depending on the stamp, it can tell you that it's made of a certain type of metal. If it has 10K, 12K, 14K, uh, or 22K, 18K, 24K, 9K, 8K, those are all indications of gold. And that's the carat weight and purity of the gold content. And those can be marked on the back, on the sides, on the clasp. Guys, if it's a pair of stud earrings that are really tiny, on the post itself, the portion that goes through the earlobe, that tiny little section, there can be a marking or a stamp there that indicates that it's made of gold. A lot of times, gold earrings will have a gold-colored post. And, and uh, oftentimes, if it's not gold, that post will be of a silver content because it'll be, say, like a surgical steel, something that's not gonna irritate your skin. That's just a little deeper dive. I absolutely love this job. I mean, I could do this all day. Folks, the following pieces here of jewelry I'm gonna show you are all things that I bought for $10 or less because the place I bought them from did not know that they were made of a valuable uh, type of metal. First piece is super obvious. No one even looked at it, apparently, because it, well, doggone you. It says sterling on it right there. The M probably indicates whoever it was that made it, but uh, it's a little turtle. It's made out of sterling silver. That's 925 parts out of 1,000 of silver. Next up, we have a little brooch here. You've got an amethyst in the middle, some onyx right there. On the back, you can see right here by my thumbnail, there is a little marking. Let's see if you can see it. Right there. It says Sterling right there. It's upside down. Right here we go. Sterling. You see that? And then right next to it, it says 925. That indicates Sterling silver. So that's made out of silver. Now it's going to get even harder, guys. This little tiny pin here, beautiful, kind of a coppery gold color. It seems like there's nothing on there if you look around. But right here by my thumbnail, right there, on the end of the clasp, if I pull this up, you can see it says 14K right there on the end. It's very tiny. And this is 14 karat gold. It's worth way more than the $2 I spent on it. This is one I bought after I had already gone to the place and looked around at the jewelry, and I passed it by because this opal, to me, looked probably not authentic. But now that I know that this actually is marked as 14K, you can see right there, 14 karat gold, I bet that that is an authentic opal. Last piece here is beautiful. I just picked this up last week. It's a little dragonfly beautiful color and it's hard to tell but there's a couple places that there's a mark and there's a mark up here on the corner and there's one right here on the corner let's see if we can pull it up so you can see it right there on the top in the middle with that glare I'm trying to move that glare you can see it says 14k right by that little hole what we have here is a dragonfly about three and a half grams it's got 14 karat gold cultured pearls eight diamonds four on either side and these two little eyeballs here guys which you'll notice have holes behind 
and there are holes behind all of these indicating that these are nicer. They're blue, and they're little blue sapphires. You can kind of see through them. This is about a $300 piece of jewelry, and I paid $10 for it. So always be looking to see if you can find the marks that indicate the carat weight, the purity, or the type of metal. Shoot, that was a great deal. Here's a tip that you might not hear that often, but I have run across it actually a lot recently, and that is if you're examining a piece of jewelry and you notice that in sort of the crevices or sort of hard to reach areas like around a hinge or a clasp or something like that, if you see something that looks like a white powder or sort of a residue or powder, I'm not talking about dark like a tarnish, like tarnished uh, silver or something like that, but like a powdery substance that kind of crumbles and falls off, if you see that, it doesn't mean that this is the case, but I have found lately pieces of jewelry that have that, and what it turns out to be is residue from polish that someone had used to polish that piece in the past, and then they did not end up cleaning it adequately after polishing it, and some of that polish has uh, dried and became almost kind of like crusty or like powdery. If a piece of jewelry has that, it likely means that it has been polished at one point in time. And, uh, you know, it stands to reason that a person who's polishing a piece of jewelry is doing so because that piece of jewelry is valuable to them or it is made of a type of metal that typically tarnishes and that they want to bring it back to life. Those types of uh, metals oftentimes are the precious metals, gold and silver. I found a pocket knife not long ago that looked fairly tarnished and it had like a little hinge at the end. In fact, I'm gonna show that to you in this video later on. I found after I started to polish it up that it shined real nice. And I found on the very end a stamp that said 14K. It also said sterling. So this was sterling silver that had uh, like a gold, a 14 gold carat gold plating on it. And underneath, underneath of the little um, edge of like this hinge that you could uh, attach like a chain to, it had this powdery substance, and I noticed it right away because I polish things pretty frequently, and I saw that that had been polished in the past. So even if I had not found that marking, if I had just seen that powder, at the very least, it would have been an indication to me to examine it more closely and a little bit further. And by doing so, I would have run across that marking that said 14K, and that's a big deal. Even though this is not jewelry, here's this knife I was talking about that I found. It was super tarnished. You're not really looking necessarily for a maker's mark, however. And sometimes you look on the blade right up here for something, but this is going to say that it's just made out of stainless steel. However, right here at the edge, it says sterling, and you keep moving around. It says it is 1 20th 12K. GF stands for gold filled. So this is sterling silver, and 1 20th of the metal weight is 12 carat solid gold. In summary, folks, when you're looking for stamps, you're looking to see if there's any indication of who made it. So a name like Weiss, Listener, Coro, some other ones of like uh, kind of a lower end costume jewelry that, that can still sell for decent money would be, say, Monet or Sarah Coventry, people like that. Does it have a stamp that says the type of metal? Does it say sterling? Or does it have a number that would indicate the purity of the metal? 925, 800, 585, 14K. Look at those. If you're not sure what the number means, then please do your research and find out. Do not go about giving away, bartering, trading, or selling a piece of jewelry that you do not know what it is because other people will know and you might not get the best value for it. Lastly, folks, I'm going to give you an example of something that is higher end and something that is not. So what you have here are two brooches. Just off the bat, this one looks way more attractive than this one. There's a lot more color going on. It's an interesting pattern. Then we flip these things over, and what we're looking for is to see if there is a hole in the back behind the stones. In this case, every single stone here has an opening, so light can pass, whereas on this side, they do not. The, the metal on the back is smooth here. There's not much attention paid to it other than it's polished, whereas over here, it's all uh, got this texture to it. 
right you flip it back over i notice that in this piece all of the stones are set with very sturdy prongs to keep those tightly in there and not fall out whereas in this case you all these pieces are just glued down into place which means they could fall out and likely are less valuable and you turn them over again we're looking to see if there's any sort of maker's mark on it does it say who made this piece no this has no maker's mark on it on this piece do we have a maker's mark hmm no we do not so in this case no maker's mark we don't know who made it but if we continue to examine maybe it'll say something about the type of metal or maybe this is made of gold we don't know look around we're looking all over i don't see anything however if i look real hard on this you'll find that right here in the upper left there is a mark here and that mark says 925 that indicates that this is made out of sterling silver it's made of sterling silver and it has several stones the blue stones are a topaz the purple are amethyst these larger yellow ones are citrine and these kind of lime green color or these very light green color are peridot so we've got a lot of carat weight of stones made out of sterling silver and it says so on the piece it's an attractive piece this kind of piece would sell for probably over a hundred dollars whereas this piece you might fetch five bucks if you're lucky there's an example guys good luck hunting at this point you're probably asking yourself hey rusty two things first off why are you so scruffy why haven't you shaved your beard lately and second of all uh why can't you just sit here and talk to me face to face and stop driving around uh don't you have time for me well to answer your first of all great questions uh let me answer those uh the first one is I've just been working so hard, and I usually use uh, Flo as a pretty good indication of when I should uh, shave or not, and she hasn't said anything to me yet, and so that's kind of why. I expect in the next day or two, she's going to, you know, give me an indication, and uh, then I'll try to trim it up a bit. To answer your second question, uh, guys, the whole point of me driving around is that I'm taking you to a spot where I'm going to look at some jewelry today. I'm going to try to find a couple of pieces that are nice to give you an example, and then I'm going to buy a couple of stinkers as well, and I'm going to compare them for you so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. All right. I've grabbed this bag at a Goodwill today, and this is what they sell uh, around here in West North Carolina. These bags are not very big. $25 and guys that's expensive I mean it really is not worth it but for the purposes of this video I wanted to show you how you might go about looking through uh, various pieces of jewelry to see if you can find something that might be a little bit more valuable okay so I'm just going to go ahead and dump these out and we're going to go through some of these and just see what we might find this is a mixture of various things we've got uh watches brooches looks like bracelets maybe necklaces earrings all of that so let's take a look first off we've got some little bracelets here these are silver tone and we're going to look on the inside and just go around and see if we see any sort of markings about who made it or if there's any indication of any uh metal purities well no there is not i think these are pretty cheap looking so i'm going to put them to the side that was pretty easy <clears throat> here we got a broken watch piece that's worth nothing move that over here's something here's some earrings they're kind of a, a fabric of some kind on the outside and then these are um, kind of clip-on earrings nothing in there no indication again probably not worth anything okay here's some earrings with little kitty cats on there we're gonna look in the back see is there any sort of maker's mark or anything like that on there I don't see anything. I also don't see any indication of a metal purity or anything on the back, so that's not worth anything hardly. I mean, it's kitty cat, so it might be worth something, but not high end by any means. This is a very gaudy looking uh, print, blue and black. Uh, doesn't is not working. Uh, maybe just needs a battery of some kind, uh, but who knows? Moving along, we got some more uh, earrings here. And this is an example of something super cheap, guys. Plastic, okay? Plastic 
and uh, it's got these little settings here kind of, but if I push real hard, I could probably pop one of these out. That's how loose they are. Uh, very cheap. Here's another piece. Guys, yeah, pretty cheap. Plastic piece here. Uh, a little metal, but you know, not really anything here. Now, one, uh, this does actually have a little uh, maker's mark here. It's a little tag, and it says Avon. Avon is a brand that makes uh, kind of cheaper costume jewelry. Even though it's got a brand name on it, I know that that brand doesn't sell real well. So I'm going to cast it aside. Okay, this looks promising. So here are some earrings. Um, I'm going to pull the back off of one. And we're going to take a look. And I can tell that there is some sort of maker on here. And uh, I can't see what it is yet. It looks like Avon again. So I don't know if you can see that in there. But there's uh, right there that flat part, and it says Avon on there. That's what it says. So, again, uh, not super high end uh, by any stretch, but it is a pair. And uh, I might be able to put this, because these are metal. Um, so I might be able to actually put these with something else to kind of beef up another um, lot that I, I might have. So I'll put that over here to the side. That's the best thing i found so far. More plastic stuff, guys. This stuff would sell for like a buck or two, just at like a, you know, like a, a Dollar General or something. And it's really cheap stuff. This is also a couple of other piece, cheap pieces of jewelry here. Not even worth fiddling with, guys. I can tell just by looking at it that this stuff is not worth hardly anything. Well, you know, sometimes you win some and sometimes you lose some. Okay, we got a another watch here. This is an Express brand. So Express, that's a, you know, you see those at malls sometimes. Um, down here it says China, China on it. So, like, it's not, I can tell it's real rough. It's starting to rust. It's not you know, operational. Probably not worth much of anything. Okay, now here's something. Uh, it looks a little bit nicer just from first glance. You got this bracelet here with a bunch of different jewel colors. Uh, and as I go through... I can see that there's some jewels. So first glance looks okay. The clasp itself though is pretty pretty uh it's it's like a different color. It's you can kind of tell that the brass color has kind of worn off and you can see that it's an alloy metal. So this is not going to be real valuable. If I look at the clasp up here, I see no makers marks, no names of any kind. Let's look at the back. Well, these stones, even though they're sparkly, are not open in the back, and so probably not real valuable. They are prong set, but let me just show you. Even though these are, are all in here, if I just take my thumbnail and I start to pry a little bit on these little prongs, I can pull them up, and I can... Look at that. I just popped one right out of there. You can see this stone here is blue on one side, but if I flip her over... It's kind of like a brassy color on the other side. And so, uh, guys, it's not not valuable. And that's what I was talking about with those prong settings. See, I popped that right out of there. Pull it right out. So this is not a valuable stone. This is probably plastic, uh, if not like a piece of glass. Not real valuable. This piece, I'll probably put that uh, little stone back in. And I'll throw this in another lot just because it has, from, from like a distant glance... Uh, it looks like it could be worth something, but it's really not uh, that valuable. So I'm going to pop that over to the side. I've got this stone here. Still got this stone. And I'll use this uh, stuff I got. It's basically like fingernail polish, uh, like a white clear coat stuff. That's great to use, almost like glue, to put stones back in if they pop out uh, or if you need to replace something. Here's a loose, and I don't know if the pair's in here, a loose uh, thing, uh, earrings. It's uh, got some Asian writing on it, uh, but again, plastic. This looks like to be ceramic of some kind, but no maker's mark and nothing to, to talk about, you know, uh, what type of metal it is. For those of you who stuck around, guys, here's a bonus tip. If you have costume jewelry that is not prong set, it has stones that are glued in, maybe it's higher end because you know who the maker is or you just really like it, but one of the stones has fallen out. If you can find a stone that th that's roughly the same size and color, this is the best type of thing. Uh, this is basically like clear fingernail polish or like the, a coating, what you would put over, like 
and enamel. You get this and you just take it and you dab it in the spot or you can even take a toothpick, get a little on the end, dab it there, just drop a little stone in place, let it dry and it will hold it in place really well. Moving along, got some more, just a, kind of a mustardy color hoop earrings, but they're even cracked a little bit and plastic again. Tossing that off to the side. Here's another uh, pair of earrings, just little, you know, plastic beads again, not worth anything. Same situation. These are kind of coppery color. I'm looking around. I don't see any metal indications or any uh, name of, of any brand. So I'm going to keep tossing that off. Just a loose piece of plastic. So much plastic up in here, guys. Here's a set of earrings that won't look too bad. They're heavy. Uh, I'm gonna, I can kind of pry them up. And I like to do this because I want to see on the inside, see if there's any kind of indication of a maker's mark or anything written on this part. I don't see it, but you know what? They're in okay condition. And uh, so, again, I'll uh, I'll put these in a lot, kind of with these others that I found a minute ago. I'm going to put those off to the side. Here's a loose hoop earring, but there's no metal marks, nothing on it. Here's a, uh, this is where that one piece of plastic can't see it, it popped right off. So cheap, guys, they're just broken basically in here. Not, they can't even withstand sitting in a, uh, a group, a bag of other stuff. Here's a, a again, a great example of something that uh, is just not as cheap. It's plastic pieces. You look on the back, there's no opening for the stones, and it's got that texture to look again. Okay, very cheap, low end costume jewelry. Okay, here's something that's kind of like a goldish tone. Um, sometimes uh, silver will actually tarnish in this kind of goldish color. Flip them over and look. Ah, well, look at this. So, first piece that we found that actually has a maker's mark, KC. So, I can look that up. I don't know what those the values of KC branded jewelry uh, bring, but I'm going to put it off to the side because that's worth taking a look at a little bit later. All right, here is, uh, looks like a bracelet of some kind. I'm going to look at the latch first. Uh, again, you got that textured look. That's not a good sign. <laughs> uh, sometimes the maker's name or, or, or information is underneath of the clasp. I see nothing there. And these are uh, faux pearls. The way I know that they're faux pearls just off the bat is that they're right next to each other. Real pearls are going to be strung up with a tiny knot in between each of the pearls. And the reason being, if it's a valuable pearl, you want there to be a gap between each pearl so that they don't rub against one another and damage each other. So I can tell right away this is not real pearls. Um, and then judging by the quality of the clasp, the fact that there's no maker's mark or metal, uh, again, it's just an indication that this, from a distance, could look like a nice piece of jewelry. But when you examine it closely, it turns out it's it's really pretty cheap. Okay, here's, um, looks like we got two pieces, two earrings with a third here that do not go with this original set. Uh, I'm going to pull one of these off just to examine it close more closely. Okay, so let's go by the tips again, right? Okay, it doesn't look too horrible. Okay, it looks nice. I mean, there's very high-end jewelry that looks roughly like this, so I like the design. Uh, I don't see any indication of metal or, or maker's marks initially. There are stones, though, so let's turn her over and see. Well, bad news is that the back of it, although it's not textured, there are no uh, openings for the stones to be uh, have light go through, and you can see that they're just glued into place. So these are likely plastic or glass, and these are fake pearls. Um, but again, the look of it is not too terrible. So somebody might like the look of it enough to wear it. So uh, because it's not ugly, it's got actually a decent look, and all of the stones, even though they're not precious stones, all of these are intact. There's no repair work that needs to be done. So I will put these off to the side and I might be able to make myself a decent little earring lot out of some of these, even though they're not that valuable. Moving on, we got another set of earrings here, kind of a silver tone, kind of, they kind of hang together. It's kind of a cool look. Again, you look at the back of it, got that texture look again. That's not a good sign. And there is no marking as, as to metal content or brain. I'll put that off to the side though, because it's not terribly ugly. You might be able to salvage that. Uh, here's a little hoop with, uh, well, looks like this hoop is caught up in the uh, holder for this class. So we got a little brooch here. Um, it looks to be, you know, it's plastic. 
made out of plastic. It's like a Mardi Gras type thing. Somebody might be interested in this as a brooch. Maybe they're going to wear it uh, to a, a party or something. Uh, so I'll put that off to the side because quirky things like that sometimes sell. This one, looking at uh, an earring here that's loose. There's nothing, uh, doesn't look like the other one's here unless it fell, fell off inside, which we'll look for in a moment. Uh, it does have uh, stones. So again, we, we turn it over. It's just, it's textured and there's no opening. So that tells me, and there's no information on it. I know I'm kind of repeating myself here, folks, but I'm trying to get uh, the point across that, you know, using this uh, in practice uh, is, uh, it really will help you out. Here's another set of earrings, uh, kind of big dangly things, uh, but no information on those, pretty cheap. Here's a, a piece of metal, looks like a, an old uh, nail of some kind. So that's not jewelry, but you can throw that off to the side. Okay, here is a, a watch. It's the brand says Turner, T-E-R-N-E-R. -E -E it looks like a decent um, watch itself. Um, the band is quite bizarre. It's kind of got these faux uh, plastic crystal things. The band is pretty, look at that. Even as I turn it, look, I just turned it and the band broke right off. <laughs> Man, the stuff is cheap. All right, another pair of earrings here with some fake stones. You can tell right off they're very uh, ugly, kind of uh, dark colored. But we'll just look on the inside and see if there's any marks. Nope, no marks. Moving on. There's that, there's that one that uh, had fallen off, I guess. Okay, here's a cute little, a little brooch here. It just says Believe. And it's got uh, what appears to be, uh, at first glance, a color, but I can't tell if that's enamel or if that's an actual stone. And then we got a little star here with a little glued on stone. But let's turn it over and just take a look. All right here. So this is the, another piece here where you can see there is some sort of uh, branding here. And let me see if we can take a look at that up in here. And the branding, it looks like... It's like Don Craft or Bancroft or something like that. But we'll put that aside. We'll look for that after a bit. Another pair of earrings here. Gold tone. Got that texture, but nothing on them. Still put this with these others. I'm going to try to make, you know, an earring set. Uh, a lot out of these. Here's a little pen. It's an American flag pen. Because of the content, uh, this will probably sell either by itself or I could put in a lot of some other stuff. It's just an enamel paint. So that's okay. Not high value by any means, but it'll be all right. Okay, here's another bracelet. This time we've got, I'm going to go, there's a couple bracelets in here. I'm going to rip this off here. Already at first look, they look a little bit nicer than uh, some of these others that we've seen. This one right here, you can see there's the clasp. So I'm going to start by looking at the clasp to see if there's any sort of uh, name uh, or branding on it. And there is not. And then I'm going to look on the underneath side, nothing. And you can see on the underneath side, it's flat, so the stones are not shining through. So that indicates that they're cheap. They are all here though, however. So I'm gonna put this along with this other one that I showed you earlier, and we'll probably do a lot of some kind with these. And then this other bracelet, it's got a cool little hinge here. This is a different type of hinge than you typically see, and it, it may date it a little bit. And it's kind of popped out of place here. I'm not exactly sure if this is a twist off. Oh, you just pull it straight through. It is a bizarre kind of clasp. Uh, looking on the clasp itself, I don't see any indication of a metal. Even name this is made to look like gold kind of nugget type of a bracelet. But there's no marking on it. It's it's not a bad bracelet. It's it's you know somewhat appealing. There are gold ones out there that look just like this. So we'll keep it because somebody will be interested, even though it is not made out of real gold. But because there's no markings, if it were real gold, there would be a marking in Katen what carat weight it was last couple of pieces here guys we got this which looks kind of just very basic very rough but it has kind of like a higher end look to it just because of its simplicity um on the back here there's no markings about what type of metal it is there's nothing about who made it and so somebody might want this as like a just an accent piece it's possible it's just a 
just a piece of metal essentially um i'll put this over here that could go in with some other lot and then we got this little pin here uh and it it's like it's got a, a little car on the on the bottom of it right and it says mk now who what is mk i don't know i'll look up mk brooch uh or pen and we'll see it's it's an it's an, kind of a nice type of metal but uh it is branded of some kind maybe this is just supposed to be someone's initials i don't know so this right over here guys is all the junk so basically this is the kind of stuff you throw it in the grab bag and you just hope you can get 10 bucks out of it nothing was made out of any precious metal oh we have another pair of earrings here i didn't even see these and these are Looks like these are uh, birds, and somebody's probably going to want these because of the content, the birds. Let's just look and see if there's any sort of indication of who might have made this. Is there anything there? Nope, and you can see it's magnetic right here on that little part. It's uh, So these are kind of cool, painted. But these are the, the ones, guys, that I'm going to keep is these gold tone looking things. They aren't made out of precious metals, but... They are somewhat appealing to the eye, and I can do, I got this brooch I need to look up, and I can put probably a lot of these earrings together in a lot, maybe get 10 bucks for those, and then maybe 5 bucks here for the Dale Earnhardt uh, watch. It doesn't work, so, you know, 5 bucks here, 5 to 10 dollars for all that, 5 to 10 dollars for this, 5 dollars for that. I could maybe make my 25 bucks back that I spent on this whole lot, I'm hoping so. Well, guys, if this helped... Uh, please leave a comment. Let us know. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please consider doing that uh, or like it and tell your buddies. I hope this, uh, this helps. Maybe next time when you find something out there, you'll know how to look at it and evaluate it the right way. Take care. Rusty, rusty, rusty hair.